Hi guys, Jim here. As you can see, we got some snow last night. So, I just wanted to come out here for the weekend. Enjoy my time out in the woods. And I'm gonna build a long fire to heat up the shelter. But this time I got something special for you guys. I got a thermo camera. Woohoo! This doesn't take videos, but it takes still pictures of the thermal mass of whatever you're pointing at. So I'm gonna build a traditional council fire. Another word for that is an upside down fire. But I'm gonna show you guys how to build it uh, the proper way. And then I'm gonna light it up, light it up, let this shelter get heated up, and then I'll take some photos for you. Man, you should have seen your face. Yeah. This is Jim and Gage here, my son. Hi. We hope you enjoyed our little joke there on the uh, loading video. <laughs> We're going to do a little video on how to build a council fire out in the woods. So stay tuned and hope you enjoyed the video. on the blackboard here what a council fire is and how we build it. So you have your base which is going to be your biggest logs on the bottom. Okay? And then above that your next level is going to be your green wood. And above that, your dead wood. Above that, green. <clears throat> and then dead. <clears throat> and then all these spaces you're going to fill with either clay or mud or finger sized sticks. So all these spaces have to be filled. Okay. So all these void spaces you just chink with mud, like I said. You gotta fill it. That way, there's no updraft, there's no wind or air getting in here. You don't want any of that. Okay? You want it to burn from the top down. And then, when you're ready to start your fire, you use your kindling and you have a long twig bundle right here. And then you set that on fire. You set that on fire. And as this burns, it'll burn your first layer that's dead. As the first layer is burning, it's going to dry your first green wood. Then that'll catch on fire. And then that'll burn down burn the dry wood and then again as this catches on fire it'll dry the green wood and so forth and so it'll slowly 
burn down. Now a good council fire can last, I've seen it last four hours. Um, mine, I'm probably going to build one that lasts about two hours, we'll see. So, that's basically how you build a council fire. So, tomorrow morning, I'll go out there and I'll build this for you. Alright? We'll have some fun out in the woods. Alright, stay tuned. Okay, so we have our first layer down here. We want our thickest logs. And this bottom layer is going to be dead dry wood. As you can see, in between the logs we have air space. And we want to fill those gaps with smaller uh, wood. Or, in the summertime, you can use mud or clay. So that there's no airflow coming up from underneath. And that's key for a slow burning upside down fire or council fire. So I'm going to fill in all these gaps and then move on to the next layer. Okay, we got some green evergreens here. Just gonna chop off the branches. Okay. So these are the green pieces of wood. Okay, this is an evergreen conifer. I'm cutting off, I'm using my axe because I want to cut these secondary branches off real close to the main branch here. That way I have less air gaps in between each piece. How I cut these trees down is with my axe, it's leaning this way. So with my axe, I chop the front part here, okay, until I'm almost halfway through. And then on the back side, a little bit above my axe cuts, I'll just start cutting on the back side, and then that will release. I like using my saw on the back side because as I'm cutting, once it starts to go, I can leave, I can just drop my saw, step back a few feet and let it fall, you know?
move all this kindling out of my way. I got plenty of kindling, some green logs for at least two, maybe three layers of green logs. Now what I'm going to do with my axe, I'll cut off all the secondary branches and then I'll start sawing six foot lengths of the trunk. Now with my axe, I'm going to cut on the back side. So I want my legs on the other side of the trunk. And then when I do this side, I'll do the same thing. with my axe sling here. <clears throat> Put a bunch of them. In the middle here. Now I can pick it up. So now, if you ever hauled long objects on your shoulder, I'm sure you experienced it. I'm sure you experienced them going everywhere. So as you wrap up one end, that solves it. So I can haul this back without having this all over my shoulder.
put our thick kindling on top like that. I'm gonna break. I'm gonna process all this down into two or three piles. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting some of them crisscross. That'll give me a better base layer to put my big kindling twig bundle. Alright guys, so uh, I got the fire all set to light. I got the kindling and tinder and it's basically one long twig bundle. Now I got two spots where I'm going to stick my uh, fire tinder and underneath right here and here I got some strips of birch bark. All right. Now in the winter time I carry <clears throat> I carry the mini inferno and I carry lighters and ferro rods but in the winter time <clears throat> I don't fool around with fire. I carry these things here in a Ziploc bag and these are called, I forget what they're called, zip blocks. Okay, this is one huge fire tinder, okay, and it comes in its own little plastic bag. And so I can, I'm gonna break this in half, put one here and put one there, and then light it with my thick lighter. <laughs> Because again, I don't fool around in the winter time. So here we go. Cut that in half. Put one here. Put one here. And with my lighter. I light it. Then we'll sit back and enjoy the show. Okay, it's getting pretty hot in here. I take my Boreal shirt off. I got the camera here. I'm gonna take a, a photo of what it looks like. Okay, so I set up the space blanket to ref reflect some of that heat. And then I'll take a picture of it with a thermal camera and show you guys how it's working.
And as you can see, it's reflecting a lot of heat. It was like a, over 100 degrees, if I remember correctly. Pretty impressive. So this thing is reflecting some pretty serious heat. I got the thermal camera, and I'll take a picture of my face, my ugly mug, up against the background here. I can't hold it far away enough. It's, uh, it's like one o'clock, 10 minutes after one. I started the fire at uh, noon, 12, 12, 10, I believe. And so it's going pretty good. It's about halfway through the layers here. And it's really warm in here. So I'm gonna have some fun with my thermal camera. Maybe I'll take a nap, have some lunch. Gonna make some uh, balsam fur tea. So hopefully the camera can pick this up, but it's a Blue Jay bird alarm. That means there's a predator animal walking through there. And up here in Maine, most likely it's a bobcat. I got a hemlock tree here. Here's some boughs from the hemlock. Hemlock is high in vitamin C, but it's also astringent. So cup of this tea is going to make you pee a lot, but it's high in vitamin C and other nutrients, so we need to eat it or drink it. <laughs> Take that out of the fire. The hemlock boughs here. Now with this hemlock boughs and with any conifer, uh, the boughs, the leaves are going to have essential oils that are volatile. And what that means is as they're soaking in hot water, those essential oils are going to evaporate. So what we got to do for that is you got to put a lid on top because those essential oils will evaporate and they will evaporate up and in, into the air. So I'll get my lid. I'll stir this around. And I'll just put my lid upside down. And so those essential oils, as they evaporate and they come up, they'll hit the lid and, and then they'll drip back down. So 
So we'll let this steep for about five, ten minutes, and then I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll just leave the leaves inside the water. I won't strain it. I'll just sip it, and then we can enjoy a tasty beverage in the winter time. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. What we do is we tap it. So all those essential oils drip back into the container here. Now we can enjoy our tasty beverage here. All right guys, so the fire has been burning for over two hours now. And so if this was nighttime, what you want to do is, you and your partner, you want to take shifts of tending the fire. Now one trick is, if one of you knows that they're going to fall asleep first, you want that person to take the second shift. That way they fall asleep and they have those first two hours to get a good, to get some sleep while the first guy is t tending the fire. And so, as the night goes on, you can make this fire last a lot longer by adding long fires, long logs to the fire. And this will burn throughout the night. You can do two hour shifts, you can do three hour shifts. It's up to you guys. Whew, that's too hot. <laughs> I'm going to go inside here. Man's first television. <laughs> Winter time is a time where everybody, everything in nature kind of goes into a little hibernation, either literally or mentally. Hibernation. Winter time is a time to relax. Up here in the north, you spend all year, all spring, summer, and fall preparing for the long winter. Even in the springtime, you're preparing for the next winter. You're cutting firewood. You're planting your garden. In the summertime, you're harvesting uh, plants like mullen, bone set, uh, horseweed. In the fall time, you're harvesting uh, acorns and roots and tubulars, and you're cutting down firewood. You're constantly prepping and getting ready for the next winter. But during winter, it's a time to relax, read a lot of books, think about the last year, the happy times, the bad times, learn, up, learn from those mistakes. It's a time for inward looking. And it's a time for planning for the next year. What are your goals? What do you want to do? But up here in the north, you're always planning for the next winter. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video on the, how to make a proper council fire or upside down fire. I had a lot of fun this weekend uh, building it and showing you guys some stuff. I had a 
more fun playing with the thermal camera here. But that was a lot of fun. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I hope it wasn't too disappointing. But I did my best. I am an amateur. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun getting out here and playing with some fire. <laughs> Alright guys, uh, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.